Hi folks. This video is going to cover the structure and function of the plasma membrane and a little bit about passive transport across the membrane. So first thing I want to point out are the different components of the cell membrane. The primary component, as you can see, are phospholipids. So I'm just going to outline a single phospholipid here. Right? And we're going to talk more about the structure of phospholipids and why they're so superbly suited to create um, a lipid bilayer. Next, we have a number of different kinds of proteins that are embedded in the membrane. So here, anything that's, uh, that's blue. Some proteins are actually um, act as channels that allow materials to pass through the cell membrane when they can't get through on their own. Others act as um, what we call receptors. So they transmit information from inside of or the cell to the outside and from the outside to the inside. We have carbohydrate groups, um, sometimes attached to lipids, sometimes um, embedded on their, uh, on their own, and they serve to identify the cell as belonging to a particular person. So self-identification. And then lastly, we have in the bright yellow cholesterol. And remember cholesterol is also a lipid. Um, it has four fused carbon rings as its structure. And <clears throat> cholesterol um, enhances the rigidity of, of the cell membrane. Because as you'll see, the phospholipids themselves are not chemically bound together. And so the membrane at body temperature is a liquid. And the last thing we have in this image are uh, proteins of the cytoskeleton which in some cases anchor different uh, proteins in the cell membrane. So when you think about the structure of, of the plasma or cell membrane, you guys already know that um, the cell membrane is the boundary between the outside world, the chemistry outside and the chemistry inside. It's described as a phospholipid bilayer Right, bi is two, so you have two layers of phospholipids um, that have attached or embedded proteins. As I said, at body temperature, it's liquid. And <clears throat> what that means is that the, the proteins can move side to side through the phospholipids. And that's part of the way that the cell is able to interact with and adapt to the environment around it. And our model for the cell membrane is referred to as the fluid mosaic model. So to understand why we use the terms fluid and mosaic, we need to jump into the structure of phospholipids a little bit more. So this is a single phospholipid um, up close and personal, and no, you do not need to know the actual chemical structure with all of the bonds and everything. Um, what you do need to remember is that one area is polar, which we describe as being hydrophilic or water-loving. And that area is composed of a phosphate group and a glycerol group. So if you think back to our biochem lecture, right, um, fats tend to have a glycerol and three fatty acids. Well, with a phospholipid, 
one of the um, locations that would have been occupied by a fatty acid is now has a, has a phosphate group bound to it. So this phospholipid molecule is literally, you could call it bipolar um, because it has a polar area and a nonpolar area, which is referred to as hydrophobic or water fearing. So you have two fatty acid tails, right? So they're lipid. That's the lipid in the phospholipid. And um, saturated, um, in most animals, <clears throat> one of those fatty acid chains is saturated. And that means that all of the areas where you don't have carbon bound to itself, you have hydrogen. So no, sing or no double bonds. Unsaturated fatty acids have double bonds, and that makes a little bit of a kink in the molecule. So phospholipids have a polar end, which is where the phosphate and glycerol group is, and a non-polar end. And this is the largest image you can see here is the space filling model of the phospholipid as opposed to the structural diagram in the previous image. And then we have these cartoon images of phospholipids. And you can see that the fatty acid tails of this phospholipid bilayer are facing one another. And the polar head groups are facing either outside the cell or inside the cell. Simple because of the structure of single individual phospholipids, you end up with a phospholipid bilayer when you throw phospholipids into water. And that simple fact is, is um, one of the major reasons why we focus so much on water as a polar molecule. So remember that polar molecules Associ like to associate with other polar molecules because they have areas of opposite charge that are attractive because of electrostatic attraction. And that means that the, the fatty acid tails are essentially, as in the bumping and jostling, which is the molecular world, the fatty acid ta tails are actually um, forced toward one another. It's hard to emphasize exactly how important this is because it's essentially getting something for nothing. So we've got all this structure in the form of a phospholipid bilayer, but because of the chemistry of phospholipids, it actually builds itself. It's self-organizing, um, and it requires less energy to have phospholipids in a bilayer structure, which is why it automatically spontaneously happens than it does to have the phospholipids mixed in with water. So calling this the fluid mosaic model for membrane structure emphasizes the flexibility of the membrane. So the phospholipids in the inner and outer layer can move from side to side. They're not chemically bound to each other. Um, and so they're behaving like a fluid. We also have the term mosaic. And a, a mosaic is when you have individual pieces that are sort of floating next to each other, right? And you have a variety of different pieces. The variety of molecules that are in the, inserted into the phospholipid bilayer gives us the diversity of function for cell membranes. All right, so always remember structure equals function. So the function of the cell membrane allows communication between cells, right? That has to do with 
receptor proteins. The combination of membrane proteins and carbohydrates are what allow cells to be identified as self versus non-self, and we'll talk a lot more about that when we study the immune system. The extensions of the cytoskeleton in the form of the cell junctions that we've talked about help to create tissues by tying cells to, together in one way or another. The chemistry of phospholipids is what keeps the cell intact, what isolates the chemistry inside from the chemistry outside. And that's related to the fact that the cell membrane is what we call semi-permeable. More on that later. So only certain molecules can enter and exit freely. Semi-permeable. All right. That's what's up next.